What the what the heck? My oh. goodness, where's the deer gone? <laughs> Dare I should say it's a dare the mort mort Morticia. No, is it Morticia? I'm not real good with this Halloween stuff, but I love dressing up. And we we've got the house ready for uh well, we're getting the house ready. My granddaughter's helping me to get ready for Halloween because I'm working with a um another very talented lady, and we're doing Halloween series, a live series oh, of nice. Halloween -y things. And I thought, well, if we're doing that, let's just get right into the spirit. Oh, fantastic. What do you I love it. I love it. I, 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 I look at, have you lost weight? Can I... <laughs> <laughs> do I look a bit like a skeleton? <laughs> yeah, that's putting my, that puts my keto to shame, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, I've, I've got, here's one I prepared earlier. Do I, do I oh, I love it. Just borrow Niger's. You can wear his outfit. <laughs> 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 oh brilliant oh i love it i love this halloween theme we've got going on that's so cool but, but what i like and that that's purely for tissue but i don't even know if there's a word that means like that's a real word but it's pure, purely coincidental that where that i'm doing this because and it was a very last minute decision because as we um we talked earlier we're going to make chili con carne is it con carne or con carne oh i tell you what, i think i i always called it chili con carne but okay I, well so did i so that's what it will be let yeah me i reckon that's what we should just do yeah <laughs> let me get this out of the way is anyone scared of spiders hmm? oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, welcome if you've just joined us. Uh, it's myself and Nick Wood. We're back after a two-week hiatus with our Amazon Live cook-off. And yeah. Nick is doing chili con carne and I am doing a dare the kombucha, the Halloween nice. kombucha. I know, because you, you had a little bit of an issue about, uh, this is the thing, isn't there? <laughs> when you're on your boat, you are subject <laughs> to nature, shall we say. So, uh, <laughs> you didn't want to risk getting off the boat earlier in case you couldn't get back on it so you're always at this slight disadvantage <laughs> well so. well i like i like sort of that um i like i like that spontaneous thing and i like being able to have to think on my feet or my bones <laughs> this is the bones that the matter is that i do I do my I don't mind, but you have to be flexible and open and spontaneous with this because otherwise you just wouldn't cope. And so when I thought I don't have the makings for con carne and or chili con carne, and Nige was going to bring them over, and I said, Well, remember what happened last time when <laughs> yeah. we were stuck on the jetty and I was stuck on the boat, and and it was like we had to wait about three hours for him to to get um to, for the seas to be calm enough for me to go over and pick him up so what i thought this time was i wasn't going to risk it because it they've, they've just announced a severe weather warning further north or, or sort of going sort of north and then it's coming around to the south southwest and it, i don't know whether it's going to slide off this way or not i'm starting to sound like i know what i'm talking about don't i <laughs> yeah I actually, I actually don't, but you know, I, I know enough to go. Shit, the waves are high out there. <laughs> yeah, not so, not so good, not so good. Well, I'm excited. I'm glad actually because I'm really interested in knowing how you make kombucha as well. well that's so funny. Cool. I, was chatting, I was chatting to Debbie about it last week um, because oh, cool. we, we, we've had it in Australia before, um, but we've never made it in the UK. So I said, actually, we need to work out how to make it. And then suddenly yes. you said. To me, I'm going to make kombucha. I was like, oh, happy days. I don't have to Google it. I don't have to search it on YouTube. It's I've got right the here. queen uh, right here. So, so listen, guys, if you're watching on uh, Facebook, YouTube, I think we're everywhere today. Yeah, we are. We are. Let's get some links out there. Mm. Yeah, so go uh, go check us out on, on Amazon. I see it is a place to be. Um, so for me, it's uh, just type in nickwood.live. That should take you to my amazon page and uh, you then you're gonna have your little link in there and yeah, I, love, I love this this is the, one of the greatest features of, it uh, is of, of it using is. So, while I'm, 
while I find the right one, you explain what this feature is for those people yeah, this, who like live streaming. This, yeah, this, this is what we love about BeLive. This is our favourite uh, third-party live stream platform. Is that it's got this amazing sales feature, online selling feature, where you can just drop the links in. Uh, so if you want people to go somewhere else, like we want you to come and join us on Amazon. So you come and have a look. So the links just get dropped in the comments while we're live streaming. Super, super easy. But equally, yeah. you know, you can also have you could have uh, links to your if you're on Amazon, if you're an Amazon seller, you can drop links into your directly onto your Amazon sales page. What what's not to love about that? And the thing about Amazon, of course, is it is probably the most trusted website nine times out. Well, I think even more than, even more than nine times out of ten, I think probably ninety nine percent of Amazon customers have their credit cards already stored with Amazon, so it's a simple one click purchase. Um, and so you know, Amazon live streaming is super cool doing it with be live as takes it to another level it really does and it makes it so much fun when we connect up with live streamers like you and i connecting together and i have to say if you're new here welcome and uh if you're here if you've been here before please um do jump in and let us know if you're new here as well uh what who you are and where you you're coming in from if you go over to Amazon, if you click on um, either of those links um, or any of those links, there's nickwood.live and then there's also the My Time TV one with the Amazon uh, link there as well. Pop over there, give our channel some love because we aim to entertain as well as to um, inform or something. And, <laughs> and and the upshot of why I and because I couldn't get to the jetty to go to the mainland to get uh, the makings for chili con carne, I decided I would make kombucha. Kombucha is very, very easy to make once you know how, and it's yeah. very tasty. So I have to ask, did Nick, did you ever have? Have you ever had store bought kombucha? Yes, I think it was from a store for sure. Okay. It wasn't made. Yeah, so so I've, what I've come across is people have had either two, one of two experiences. They've either had someone's homemade kombucha that's not made properly and it tastes like vinegar. And and when it's like that, hey, there's Nige. Hey, hi, Nige. Thanks for joining us. He was going to be here. He was going to come and crash our party. Did you know that? Yeah, well, it's lovely when Nige is there. And last, last time, Nige did all the cooking. I know, I know. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to get an, a picture because when we first started dating, because I would do all these fancy salads, and he would send me a picture of a chopper potato and a tomato. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I'm, what I'm going to do is find those pictures from two years ago, and I'll, I'll put them up on the screen so you can see how Nigel's culinary skills have improved. And I'll tell you what. He's the bomb at that. Like when he made that uh, naked burger with the, the mushroom caps as the, right. the bread, it was like they were great. They were yeah. really yeah. good. And, so, and those pokey bowls. I mean, my goodness. Yes, the really, pokey bowls. Expanding so, my repertoire, which is really so cool. I know, right? And so he's going to come back every so often when he's available, when he's able to, and he'll be some, doing some guest cooking. So, so well. Well, you might be uh, the, uh, what is that, the Raymond Blanc School of Cookery, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Raymond so you might, have a, you might have a diploma in gourmet cooking, Nick, but I've got a knowledge. <laughs> you got, yeah, you got a knowledge. What's not to love about that? I love that. That's really, uh, it just reminds so, me of uh, that line in Crocodile Dundee, isn't it? If you've got a gun. I've got a knife. <laughs> yeah, that's not a knife. This is a knife. So, just I just want to circle back to the uh, the conversation about the kombucha. When when you have kombucha and it's not my kombucha or Alex's, she's the one who taught me how to make this, and hers is second to none. I can't even make it like she makes it. But when you it's either it either tastes like vinegar because it's not made properly or it's left to um, ferment too long. Uh -huh. Or if you have that, that's the homemade stuff. Or if you have a store bought one, it just tastes like um, it just tastes like mineral water with flavouring, and it uh -huh. doesn't have, doesn't have the body. 
that kombucha is supposed to have. Ooh. So, so I don't know how other people make it, but you know, I will. Um, I'll give you a couple of tips as we go through. But let's let's see what you've got on the menu. Cool. Well, I, obviously, because I'm not stuck on the boat, I was able to. I was just short of a little tin of tomatoes, so I've gone and got them this morning. So we've got everything I need here for chili con carne. Even it's the one thing I do have. <laughs> oh, hang on, I'll come and grab it. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, chili con carne is actually quite a simple little thing to cook. Um, I'll knock up uh, some guacamole to go with it as well. I've got avocados and fresh coriander and uh some shallots limes all that all that stuff i just pop it all in my kitchen aid uh, he, likes his, he likes his kitchen aids i certainly do i certainly do that's in the uh in the carousel on amazon and also what's highlighted in the carousel at the moment is also i'm using my circulon uh hands mm. i've got two of those on the go i've got i don't know if i can show you this this is the other day I had chalky cam. Oh, so what's is, that one? Chalky right. cam. That is uh that are those are the red kidney beans. Oh so, wow. Because I'm not joking, when I say I cook it from scratch, I cook it from scratch. You <laughs> so, do. You do. Well, I know. Not like yeah, me. Yeah. I just pull out a jar of kimchi and say, look, I made that. No, I don't. That's yeah. that's just goody. <laughs> Oh, interesting that I got yes yeah, so I've got these red kidney beans and it's one of those things I don't it's always people always said oh how long should I soak them do I soak them 24 hours do I do this do I do that uh, the reality is it's not gonna it's not gonna harm you if you just cook them up from from scratch like that yeah. what I did yeah. was I've given them like a little pre-soak so I just popped them in in cold water a couple of hours ago brought it up to the boil and then I just took it off the heat and they just sat there soaking and it's it's really lovely. Actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to video myself doing it because it's great. You see all the little dried beans suddenly start rising to the surface and plumping up. And so you could put them on, cook them for about, I don't know, 40 odd minutes. There should be. So you could do a, um, a time lapse video from above. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah, yeah. You are so full of great ideas. I'm full of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before, so, before it gets too dark outside, I do want to share my view. Oh yeah, that's a lovely thing coming into your. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh wow. Let's get rid of that so you can see. I can see what is being seen here. So it's a bit. It's very overcast at the moment, and the water and the sky are like slate grey, and it's just beautiful. It really is. But while Nick gets himself prepared. I have my granddaughter over here on Sunday and she's done some decorations because we are getting involved in Halloween and I'll just swing the camera around so you can have a quick look. Um, no point wasting it. Oop. We've got you there. Ooh. All right, so here we go. So you can see where my plants used to be. <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got all sorts of we've got purple spider webs hanging down. I can't wait until next week and I can get <laughs> oh, no. Halloween yeah. trick or treating. We've got a supposedly this spider is I don't know if you can see that. That's supposed to be um glow in the dark, but we've got hands here. Uh, uh. <laughs> on the other side it's got um down here it's got it says danger i don't know you probably can't see that not quite and see then, that. it does look pretty this, spooky though and then we've got a out back here we've got a little um skeleton hanging up there in the window and also the piece de resistance there's a couple more things but a little mate over here oh our little mate you had to get him out of the coffin for this one yeah i i, I thought i didn't know nigel was ill <laughs> oh, <lovely. laughs> oh. 
I love the sound effects. I love the sound effects. I want to say hi to Brenda watching on the on Amazon. Hi, Brenda. She said hi, Chef. Hi, uh, Brenda. And hi, Michelle as well. Hi, Michelle. Great. Thank you for watching on the on Amazon. How cool is that? Fantastic. So if you're over there, just let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, and, fantastic. Uh, okay. So listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, first job on the chili is just to, to, to brown off my mints. Um, okay. That's what gets the flavour or some of the flavour into it. You want to caramelise it a bit. Uh, and just break that down. And it's just, this is just pretty bulk ordinary what mints I'm, I'm using today. Didn't go to the butchers, but... Uh, yeah. But that's okay. Just want to brown it first, then we'll add our first magic that's something, like, that's something I definitely learned from uh, working with you, Nick, is the uh, the browning off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it makes a world of difference. Don't get me wrong. It's a pain in the backside, but it, it does just – it's another – we always talk about levels of, of flavour, so you just – Keep adding another level, add another level. Add another level of flavor. All right, well, what I'm going to do, I've had this water boiling, so I've got two pots, there's six litres of water, four in one and two in the other. And what you do is to every two litres of water, we add two black tea bags and one green tea bag. And I think that's the... That's, that's the um, what do you call it? The secret sauce is the green tea oh. that makes it. So most people just make it with the black tea. So kombucha is a fermented tea and it's used okay. with just tea and sugar used and you put scobies with them, which are like little aliens. That's a scoby. Um, and yeah, I'll explain awesome. it in is a minute. A, but is, is there like an English equivalent of a scoby? Um, it's called a scoby and it's on. Uh, I've popped it on the carousel now. It's, you can buy it from oh. Amazon. I've got oh, one wow. there for ten forty nine, um, and they do travel quite well. Mine was sent up uh, about eighteen months ago, to nearly two years ago from South Australia, and I, I stopped making kombucha for probably six months when I first bought the boat, and I didn't really have the capacity to do it or the means that the, like worried about electricity as a whole heap of stuff but yeah. anyway um so when i um so i kept the kobe scobies in a jar in the fridge and and you know as they kept cold they they're supposed to keep for three months but mine kept for over six months which was good and so i've i've brought them out and dusted them off and i've started making kombucha again and i bottled up some last night which i'll show you Oh, First, wow. you just get the water. Um, one of the things that's really important to do with um, with kombucha is to sterilise everything and just use uh, just plain white vinegar. Just oh, right, yeah. Wine. So when your water's boiled, these this water's been boiling for a while and it's steaming up the kitchen, so I'm going to turn it off now. <laughs> I thought it would give a bit more of a ghostly effect with the steam coming up but it's just making me hot. And so cool. in the two litres, I'm putting in two tea bags, um, black tea and one green tea. And in the four litres here, I'm doubling that. So two green teas and two four, uh, four black teas. And now we just let, we let that sit for five minutes and let it brew. So... I'm going to have to, while, while that does that, you just um, let us know what you're doing. I'm going to get a drink of kombucha. Well, right, I, I, I browned off my mints, and uh, first thing I'm adding into that is a good two tablespoons of ground cumin. Uh, that's going to give us our, our base flavour for the chilli. And uh, that was that used to be the missing ingredient when I made it as a, as a young man. I couldn't quite work out. What that flavour was, I was missing, and, and okay. eventually, when I did my gourmet cooking and catering, lo and behold, I found out what it was. So you can always add a little bit more as well. I do like quite a bit of um, cumin in mine. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to pop an onion in there. Yeah. As well. I just add onion, garlic, and then 
you can't see what I've just pop, put on the screen, can you, Nick? This is the beauty of being able to produce. I've just got a question there. Who thinks Nick is showing off? <laughs> Me? When I did my catering diploma. <laughs> surely, surely not. Um, um, Nigel's saying he was going to make chili sin carne, chili without meat. Have you heard of that? Chili without beef? It's without meat. It's called chili sin carne. Oh, no, I've not, I've not heard of that. Well, I mean, I've, heard, I've, I've, made, um, I've made bean chili, um, four bean chili, that sort of thing. Well, without, without meat? Without meat. Yeah, I made uh, chicken chili. That that goes well. Small small dices of chicken. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be beef. Um, but uh, you know, I, mean, um, I like to be a bit of a traditionalist. So <laughs> so we'll go with the go with my proper recipe today. But that's the thing. That's, that's what I love about cooking. Is you can take all these uh, all these ideas and recipes and just, you know add your own little little take on it experiment you know that you know and I, I, the thing is when you experiment with your cooking then chances are you'll eat your mistakes anyway no one will know it, so. <laughs> unless you do it publicly <laughs> like obviously with a chicken adobe adobe yeah. can't even That's say it. let alone cook it we might have to have another go around on that when i get a bit more confident so here's yeah. one i prepared earlier this is one that I bottled last night. It's had one round of fermentation in jars. So we use the jars. I use these jars, which is um, the three and a half litre jars, I think. So I put about three litres in each. So three and a half litre jars, wow. Yeah, so they're pretty big jars. I've just got some on the carousel now. Um, there's some different ones that I use. I have these and then I also use the ones with the tap on them, but I don't have them here. So either is fine. The ones with the tap on them is easier for when you're decanting the kombucha. Um, but generally it needs two fermentations. So what, you, what your recipe is basically for each, every two litres, you've got two black tea bags one green tea bag and a cup of brown sugar i've tried it using white sugar and i've tried it using raw sugar and it's the brown sugar it was that combination of the tea the green tea the black tea and the sugar the brown sugar that just is just spectacular it just makes it really nice i've had some, i've had some people say to me i don't like uh, sugary drinks and I don't like using sugar but the thing yeah. with kombucha is and when you use when you put the scoby in what makes it ferment is the scoby eating the sugar so it actually eats all the sugar so you don't really get sugar at all in kombucha so it's all been fermented out so or eaten by the scoby oh um, so this so this is like um just crushing my garlic so I like to use my pinholm garlic press I means you don't have to all the yeah. fluff of peeling your garlic in the first place but I'll use another I'm making quite a big batch of chili here I'm I'll make another, mm. take another one out. just take it out <laughs> you, put, you put the garlic in the garlic press without um, taking the wrapper off don't you yeah yeah <laughs> makes life a lot easier than you just pull out yeah. the pull out the wrapper at the end What's yeah, not to um, that? The number of times I spent hours. I used to do it. Um, I used to do it the very French way of of uh, of I get a go clove of garlic, I peel it, I chop it, and then I on the back of the knife I put some salt down and just crush it into a into a beautiful oh. piece. This is so much <laughs> so much quicker. Yeah, you, well, you can you can say, oh, look, I've I've wasted <laughs> at least an hour and a half of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just saying, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Oh. <laughs> I think this this wig is tickling my nose. No, I just yes, saying, it was having, she did do some housework. <laughs> oh, <I'm> having <laughs> what's that? Um, 
I'm having store-bought kombucha now. Doesn't come close to mine. Oh. No, he's right. It doesn't. I'm just going to go and get some ice cubes. So bear with me. Oh, ice cubes. Oh, wow. Ice cubes. Nice. Ice cubes. Oh, there ice you go. So just mixed up my, mixed up my yeah. onion, garlic uh, in there. That's got the um, ground cumin in there. So we're going to add to that some tomatoes, just a tin of tomatoes. Um, and obviously some chili. Ooh, that sounds so good. I've got some, some chili powder. I'm just going to add that. And then I've got some homemade chilies that uh, I shall add at the end. So, depending on how hot you like your chili, um, go easy. Some chili powders are very, very hot. Um, I like it hot. But I like a fairly, fairly hot chili. Just mix that in. And again, it's just just cooking out all the uh, just just cook out the harshness uh, of the chili. We'll do, yeah. Beans, got my beans on the go. And, uh, yeah, talk about uh, talk about eating our mistakes. The other day, I did a, I made some lovely chocolate. Someone sent me a little chocolate uh, chocolate experience um, set where you made your own chocolate. Oh, so nice. Like, it was delicious, but the way I melted the chocolate, I didn't realise it was going to it was going to uh, set as quick as it as it did, so I couldn't pour it into the mould as well. Um, oh. But, luckily, but it, it kind of worked, and it went. In, I, I kind of manhandled it into the moulds, and uh, mm -hmm. it was okay. But uh, you, yeah. you did that live, didn't you? Because I saw that. I did. Were you watching? <laughs> no. I was I watching. <laughs> we do. We do like to I try things. Like with... I know. <laughs> Try things you've never done before live while you're live streaming. Yeah, you can't, you can't say that. The one that got away was like that big because, you know, they can all see. Exactly, exactly. Put yourself <laughs> out there, that's what I say. So, so I'm just going to tin of tomatoes. All right. So while you're opening your tin of tomatoes, I'll just explain what I do. I've got one set, one scoby here. This one that's a slightly red colour. It's in the kimchi glass jar but it's actually a scoby it's not kimchi and then i've got one that's just a normal sort of tea color now this has had one uh about six days of fermenting so that's that's got berries in it so it's a berry kombucha and it's really really nice and what i do is i do with the first ferment when i make the first lot of kombucha I put berries in it. So I've got one scoby that's it's very it's a very berry scoby. And the oh. other one's the other one's a normal one. These bottles you can get on Amazon as well, the swing top lids. These are I've just popped it on the carousel. They're really, really good for um for reusing because you don't have to worry about um you don't have to worry about getting new bottles, you just or new lids, you just pop it open and then they seal, they seal tight. They're really, really good. So there's some of those on the uh, carousel now as well. Here you can grab. Well, then once you've made the first lot of kombucha, um, and I'm going to dig out the um, dig out the tea bags in a minute and then I'm going to put the sugar in and, um, and dissolve it, um, then you've got to let it go to room temperature. This has only had, so one, once you've made the first batch, also you need to put it into jars, which you can see behind me there, the, 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 the jars, sorry, the bottles are there. And they'll sit there and I burp them every day for three days. So they're a bit like babies. You sort of yeah. got to burp them, just pop the lid, just to let some gas out. Um, I, think, I think they may end up with, you know, I don't know. <laughs> my hand up with <laughs> um, I haven't had any explode touch wood, but they I have had uh, one where the lid popped off and it just went everywhere, but the bottles themselves are fairly solid. But you can drink it after the first fermentation. So these will ferment for a further three days out of the fridge. As soon as you put them in the fridge, it stops the fermentation process. That's why the scobies need to be kept in the fridge if you're not going to be using them so when you bring them out they need to be room temperature so make them room temperature like do you do that with meat don't you nick when you cook with me 
it's usually room temperature. Yeah, well, actually, not just meat, anything. Um, it's always best eggs, fish. It's always best to, to cook them from, from room temperature. It, it, it makes life easier, cooks quicker, um, cooks more evenly because you're not yeah. fighting against any, any, any excess cold. Um, so, yeah, always just, you know, it doesn't take long. You know, normally, you know, half an hour or so, bring something up to room temperature and that's that's it. And the other, and the other thing about that is, is the converse thing is when you've finished cooking, uh, and again, pretty much with everything, just always let it rest. You know, you don't have to eat, mm. you know, piping hot food. If you let it rest, it relaxes. Uh, the flavours intensify. Meat and fish, it continues to cook once you're actually taking it off the heat. So okay. the heat yeah. potential still go up while you while it's cooking. So yeah, always always rest it. I'm just going to quickly show you. Uh, I'm now going to call this. This was chalky cam the other day. This is now chili cam. So we got the we got the chili con carne bubbling away there. We're not going to do anything else with that. We're going to leave that now until all that juice has just pretty much burned off and uh, and gone because that's that's where all the flavour is. Uh, and then we'll add our beans later on because we're cooking our beans from scratch. And yeah, that's all there is to that little chili. I mean, okay, we'll finish it off. Obviously, we'll pimp it up at the end. <laughs> we'll do some little yeah, chili. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Um, but that's that's pretty much it. My big dilemma is now, you know, I'm I'm on a keto kind of. Oh yeah. Do I do I cook rice? Do I have rice in my chili? Yeah. What about what that's about? A, are you saying yes? What about this? Oh, I do like now. I do like that. Yeah, I think I've got one as well, but I'm not sure whether to do that or have real rice. Uh, oh, and hi, hi, Jay, uh, 42 watching on Amazon. Is that book good for vegans? Um, I've got two books in the carousel. Uh, one of them um, I'll quickly mention and show you is this one here, Paul Hollywood's Bread. The reason I've got oh. that one is because actually I've got someone that's sending me one of the brilliant Amazon sellers we have here is sending me some proving baskets to, to Ooh, try it nice and they look amazing and and uh yeah paul hollywood what he doesn't know about baking bread in particular uh, isn't worth knowing he well, I'd, I'd I'd hazard, i'll be honest I'd hazard, i was gonna say i'd hazard a guess nick and say that that's not really keto friendly <laughs> ah now interestingly uh interestingly sourdough um can be uh, the, the, the question was is that book good for vegans um yeah oh. pretty much pretty much um as long as you don't mind eating live yeast <laughs> i'm only joking um but but now that um for sourdough because sourdough um you get a little like your kombucha you have to you have to treat your culture and have to ferment it so what is happening is actually the the, the sugar in the carbs is actually getting transformed through the through the uh, fermentation process so it's a lot less carb than uh, the normal bread. So if you're going to eat bread, and again, all these things, you know, two slices of homemade sourdough is not going to put you over your daily limit of, uh, of okay. carbs. So everything in moderation. And as I always say, just have Saturday nights off, but just don't have every night as Saturday night. So it's all good. It's so, all good. Yeah, so yeah. All of bread. Uh, and the other one, the other book in the carousel is uh, is Raymond. Obviously, always have Raymond's book in my carousel because uh, he is my he is my favourite. So I'm just going to put back to the Raymond. Raymond's your mentor. Yes. Well. Yeah. yeah I'd like to. I'd like to think so. Not as yeah. not as much as I, I would like, but um, but yeah. No, his his recipes are are always good. So I always enjoy. It people's recipes cool. right what do i need to do all right so um i'm just about ready to take these out these are brewed for a few minutes so um i'm using the white vinegar just do a little um a little splash of um sterilization on my tongs oh yeah we like a bit of sterilization 
We do like to sterilize them. Um, we do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prepare my kitchen aid. I'm gonna pop my kitchen aid in the. Now with this, you've got to remember to take out the same amount as you put in, because <laughs> you can't oh, see yeah. them. You can't see them. They're all because um, your your brew has gone dark. You know, so all right. You might have to fish around. I can't believe I haven't got my kitchen aid in my. Where's the kitchen aid? That was a schoolboy error. So let me just put that in. Hopefully, that. This hair, this hair keeps digging in my eye. I'm just going. Oh my god! You've, 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 you've given yourself a bit of a bit of a tall order there. Adele. I think so. I think so. But that's okay because you know it's all well. It's all good fun. So what I've done with this glass of kombucha, I've put in two lemon. This is a ginger one that I made up this morning. And it's not had the three-day ferment before it goes in the fridge, but it still tastes nice enough. Because um, it was out on the kitchen cupboard, I put two ice blocks in there, and the ice blocks were lemon. So I always have squeezed lemon juice as ice blocks in the fridge and the freezer. And I love to make up some ginger, just ginger kombucha, and just put about about an inch of a, a thumb of ginger. And chop the peel that and chop it up, and then I was going to show you what it looks like, but it's floated to the bottom. So, oh. um, and so, and then I, when I pour it, if I want lemon, then I can drop in an ice cube, which really is nice because otherwise you can, you know, so you can you can put different things in kombucha. Like I said, I've got the berry one. These ones are this one's that's a berry made up a berry one um nice so you can have lots of different uh, different flavors you can make different these are my favorites i always make berry and that one's you can see that there's um ginger pieces in the top so i've made um uh, i've made several i've made mango i've made apple and cinnamon i've made uh Ooh, nice I've made rose petal and lemon myrtle uh, leaf. That's really nice as well. Uh, cinnamon is just by itself is nice. I made one, um, I think I might have told you, Nick, I made one, oh, it's about a year ago now, and Nigel was getting into it and he says, oh, oh, babe, this strawberry kombucha tastes like shit. And I said, well, that's because it's chilli kombucha. <laughs> Chili kombucha. Wow. I've been experimenting. I haven't made it since because it did it wasn't hot, but it had like a, a that sort of chili aftertaste, um, yeah. which was a bit interesting. So um so you can you can get creative and whatever your tastes are, you know, you can you can make different I did like the apple and cinnamon, that was nice, but my favorite is the ginger and um and Nigel's favourite is the berries, so I keep making those. I'm going to put in now a cup, two cups of sugar into the big pot, one cup of sugar into the little pot, and uh, my pre-sterilised cup. And nice. then... That seemed like a lot, but whoops. Sometimes you get a little bit extra. Cool. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh. Obviously, I've got my kitchen aid. So we've got. Where, where are you up to? I'm going to okay. stir this now to it. Okay. Yeah. You, you stir. I'm just, I'm just about to make the uh, guacamole to little side dish to go along with it. Um, so I've got the kitchen aid. Oh, I love this piece of kit. That's a, and I saw the other day, actually, I need to get the, I need to get the clip from YouTube. Um, there was, I talk about this, this element at the front of it. Let me spin it around so you can see. This element at the front that comes off. Okay, and, uh, and basically there's, a, there's an element there that rotates. So 
typically you've got a pasta attachment in there. But I was watching, and I know it's, it's over now in Australia, but we just saw the finals in the UK of Australian MasterChef. Oh, and, okay. And the, yeah, and they've all, they're all using their kitchen. They've all got them on their benches. And it was the judges that were doing the final thing. And they wanted to uh, roast a pineapple, a whole pineapple, over a kibachi, over a little um, uh, grill, over a little um, barbecue thing. And they basically took, opened up that. They got a, 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 a piece of wood, uh, shaped it so it would go in there, and switched it on. And it was a, like a rotisserie. It worked out. Oh, wow. Absolutely brilliant. Loved it. So, yeah, super, super amazing, these, uh, these KitchenAids. Um, if I send this over, you reckon you can do something similar? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If I had one of those, I, I, I could do it. So nice and simple, super heavyweight. So dough hook for bread making. I did that a couple of weeks ago. This is the the K the K paddle that we're going to use today because just to to, to mix in the ingredients for our guacamole. So. This is boys and their toys, folks. I've got a wooden spoon. <laughs> Nick's got his gadgets. <laughs> yeah, you know what we boys are like. So let's take the lovely, lovely, uh, big, lovely big uh, bowl here. And you can have stainless steel bowls. You can have glass bowls. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, so I've chopped up. The other part of our onion to, to go in there. Uh, also got a lime and an avocado. So let's just open up our avocado. Hopefully, it's. Well, what are you What are you putting in the doodad? Okay, so we got onion, avocado, uh, lime juice, lime zest. Uh, and I'm going to just stack it full of fresh coriander. Nice. And that is one of the best ones I've come across. Really good one. I mean, you can add, you can add, you can do all sorts of things. You can add little bits of in the past. I added bits of tomato, garlic, you name it. I'll put it in there. But this one for me just feels nice. It feels natural. Um, if you like coriander. Then you're oh, I love coriander. Now, what what do they call it? In are you saying coriander for me, or are you, do you normally call it cilantro? Cilantro, cilantro. Oh right, no, no. I, yeah, I call it coriander, but yeah, you're right. In the states, cilantro. Yeah, that's cilantro. Good, that's a very good point. So let's just get some uh, lovely fresh lime zest. Oh, I need to put a micro planer in my um. In my carousel, note to self. Note to um, self, yeah. And then let's just uh, squeeze our lime juice in there as well. That's lovely. A uh, little bit of, little bit of salt, I think, wouldn't go amiss. Pop my little mould and sea salts in there. That will be nice. And then I'll have a big, fresh, fresh bunch of coriander. There you go. You got the floor, matey. I got the floor. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'll sit in the corner and drink my kombucha. Yeah, this is just, <laughs> it does, yeah you just take it easy. Uh, yes. I'll just, uh, my job I'll just here is um, to you know, uh, try not to, obviously try not to cut your fingers, but... Just want to dice, just, just move something out of the way so I can get more space. So if you yes. are with us, whether you're on my time or Nick Wood or Women in Business Amplified or YouTube or LinkedIn or over on Amazon, please pop over to Amazon, say hello over there and have a look in the carousel. Nick's is Nick Wood. I just popped them into the new, um, uh, comments thread again. Yeah, fantastic so option that we can do live. Hang on, here we go. In there. there we are. And, and 
Give us a little hit the follow button over there and show us some support. So got one to ten. Let's go up nice and slow. Then speed it up. Oh. Now gonna become KitchenAid Cam. And that is a uh... that looks nifty. So there you go. Put that on a slower. And that is it. That is a, a really quick and easy wow. guacamole. Guacamole, guacamole. I'm never sure. What guacamole. We're, what we're supposed to call it. It doesn't matter as long as we agree. Yeah, we. <laughs> so. even, if, even if we don't agree, that doesn't matter. If there's any doctors in the house, can you tell me whether my bones are on upside down or not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hang no. on. I haven't yeah. figured that one out yet. Yeah. Well, I just figured it was because you were in Australia. I reckon, I reckon the big ones are supposed to be my elbows. What do you think? Oh, yes, there could be. I think they might be upside down. Yeah. Did you find that humorous? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. The fact that you've, you're embracing Halloween and you're going. I know. Forward. I said before, my son is absolutely disgusted with me because he used to want to get into, he's 19 now, and up until he was about 16, he'd just get right into Halloween. And um, and I'd be going, grind, you know, he's, that's an American thing. We haven't got no time for that here. Next minute, here I am. <laughs> and he's, he's in Adelaide. He's going, what are you doing, Mum? Why did you do that when I was growing up? <laughs> oh. That's so sick. I was going to say, 19 year old son, you don't look old enough for death. Oh, well, when I tell you my oldest daughter's 41. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there oh, we go. Gosh, right. Oh, okay, yeah. let's have a check on my beans. Okay, so the chili's still reducing down. That's, uh, that's coming along. Won't take too much longer to reduce that down, and as that reduces, uh, that's where the flavour is just going to intensify and intensify. And that's one of the things that I really can't stress enough to people: is reduce. You, you'll get so much more flavour the more you reduce um, sauces down. And also, I couldn't believe it. We, I was, I did a, a, a game cooking course a couple of years ago. And we what? we we had to we had to pluck, draw, and um, and cook a, a partridge. Oh, and game the, cooking! Is that what you said? Yeah, okay. game. Yeah. And so and so we made this this jus, this beautiful red wine jus. But the amount the amount of bones, the amount of wine we actually put in to just have this tiny, tiny little jus. But my goodness, it mm. was like heaven on your tongue. But I would oh, never, you just can't believe you can't believe, or I couldn't believe. How, how much you could actually reduce um, a sauce to. So we're going to take that right, right okay. down. And if you take it too far down, this is a nice thing, you can actually add water back to loosen it. Up. To, to get so it back you can, up. You can never go well, totally wrong. Well, speaking, well, speaking of game cooking. Having looked at beans, I might have gone. I don't know. Speaking of game cooking, I was oh, at, yeah. my sister's, at my sister's the other weekend um, out in the Clare Valley, which was beautiful. And she said that they had a friend who was doing um, breeding guinea pigs for gourmet dishes. Now, I found that a bit disturbing because I had a guinea pig. If you're, in, if you're in the US, I think they're called gerbil. Gerbils? Guinea pigs? Same sort of thing. And so they, they said they had this friend who was breeding them and wanted to try it. They, they invited them over for dinner. And they wanted to try because he's fattened up two of them. They called the Sate brothers, <laughs> and he's fattened up two of them. And they were they were invited over for dinner. I think the week we left. Um, so, so what what would you say about cooking guinea pigs, Nick? Well, that says it all. <laughs> 
Uh, well, it's only only because I mean I'm sure they t I'm sure actually they they probably taste lovely, um, but might taste like chicken. Having, yeah, <laughs> having had those things, yeah, taste taste like chicken. Um, yeah, that is so true. That just tells you how industrialized our chicken processing is. Everything tastes like chicken because chicken don't taste like anything. Um, but but no, I mean, and it, and it probably does taste lovely. But because I had some as a pet as a kid. I'd probably yes. think twice about it, but I've had, you know, but I've had equally, I've had uh, horse and goat and uh, rabbit yeah. and, and all those sorts of things. And so it's not really different. It's just what you're, what you're, what used, you're to. used to. Yeah. Uh, well, we used to eat rabbit, but, you know, we'd go out and we'd do, um, go out and, and, and trap them and kill them and, and skin them and eat them. And, you know, rabbit we'd soak in when we lived on the farm. Um, and that was just yeah. something that you did. The boys would go out and they'd do spotlighting. I don't know if you heard of that. Yeah, so, yeah, so they get yeah, so it's like they get caught in us in the headlights, isn't it? So they, they yeah, freeze. yeah, and then they'd sit there like like this, just going, yeah. you know, and kill me now, them. which they oblige, and the boys obliged. And yeah. I did. I had one one rabbit that I uh, I was out with them, and I was just holding the light, and then someone gave me the gun. And there was this poor little bunny. It was wedged in the corner of a paddock. But like a, it was like just sitting there like this, and they're all yelling, "Shoot it! Shoot it! Shoot it!" So I got loose, and I pulled the trigger, oh. and I hit it right between the eyes. And I tell you what, it's the last time I went out. It's the last time I touched a gun. It was like, no, no. Wow. <laughs> but it's funny. But they could bring them back, and I could, I could gut them, and I could skin them, and soak them in water for you know forty eight hours in salt water, and. And I make some really nice rabbit, um, sweet and sour rabbit. Like you make it like sweet and sour pork, but you make rabbit. So, and that's not a challenge, by the way, because I don't ever plan to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, was... had, I've had some, I've had some, the best rabbit I had was uh, in a restaurant in Portugal. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, was a, that was a really off the beaten track um, restaurant, really beautiful. And it, it just produced this. Quite incredible um, rabbit stew, and um, mm. as part of the, as part of the, did I mention I've got a diploma in gourmet cooking and catering? As part mm. of that, I had to, I had to joint a rabbit. Um, oh, okay. So, I, so, I, so I've, I've done that, jointed and cooked rabbit, and I, and I, and I like it. It's, it's, it's nice and pleasant. Um, but uh, Debbie saw it, and you know, when you have a chicken and jointing a chicken, I, those, these things are why I love cooking. I love, I love chopping things up. Uh, but the rabbit came and it still had its head on. It was didn't have its fur on, but it still had its head on. Um, so you can see its little bunny face and its long ears. Oh no! Uh, so Debbie was totally anti eating. La 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 la. la, la. Over here, take but, the head off. Hey, it, it depends where you live. I mean, you guys, you eat kangaroo, ostrich. I mean, how far down? How far down the marsupial chain do you go? Do you go kangaroo? No, Stop the tongs. We stop at koalas. We don't eat koalas. <laughs> you the sure? Kangaroos, kangaroos were, uh, you know, they when we had one on the farm um, over on the west coast, uh, they were they were a pest. They were like in, like there was hundreds of thousands of them. So, you know, they were, actually I think you had a license to my my grandfather had a license to cull because wow. uh, so. But I don't know what I think they just used them back then. They used them for dog meat, but then I guess the 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 value of the um, the meat so high in iron. Apparently, it's very very good for you if it's cooked properly. But... Oh, really? Anyhow, let's see what do we got here. We've got guacamole. Yeah, got guacamole going on here. Um, looks very nice. Mm. Oh my goodness, that tastes good. In the bowl. Oh, that looks, that looks really good. Oh, really nice, yeah. Tastes amazing. All that citrus, all that lime juice. Oh, yeah. The centro, the coriander. Oh, so sorry. Uh, oh, right, on the Let's put this in a little bowl. Nice. See now, what I don't, what I really need is a nice glass of kombucha. Oh, 
to go with it. That one's got, I think I might have put just one ice cube too many of lemon in there. It's very lemony, lemony snicket. And you say you made a lemon myrtle one as well? Yes, yeah, my daughter has a lemon myrtle tree and she got the, the leaves and dried them out. And she also had got a beautiful uh, rose bush with a very, um, it's a, like a lilac rose and it's very fragrant and really and so she dried out rose petals as well and you just put the dried lemon myrtle or you don't have to use dried you can use the fresh but just crush it up so the flavor goes through the kombucha and it really is lovely so i've had i've had ginger and lemon myrtle and rose petal and lemon myrtle and then i ran out of lemon myrtle so i need to go and see my daughter again <laughs> Right, so there we go. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, boys. Yeah, so the guacamole is totally suitable for vegans because that was just onion, lime, coriander, pitro, or mm -hmm. and um, what's yeah. that fruit in it? What's the name of it? <laughs> I've just gone blank on it. Avocado. Avocado. That's the thing. What was that green? That green thing. The pulp. Stuff. That green. That green thing that makes it all green and it's good. Got good fats in that for you. And so it I don't know. I don't know about the, Yeah, it is a superfood. I don't know about the UK, Nick, but um, limes in Australia they're nearly thirty dollars a kilo. They're like wow. Pencil. Yeah. Yeah. Lemons that's are, that's yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. No, I. I, I well, all, apart from all food um, is going up, uh, everything's going up in the UK at the moment. It's uh, petrol prices, energy prices, mm. food. Uh, yeah, we're in for a bit of rampant inflation, I think. So. Um, oh, yeah. But it's not, but, uh, I don't think, I certainly don't, I don't, I don't think I paid over the odds for those, um, those lines. Mm. Yeah, I saw the price of them the other day and went, oh, all right, I'll get lemons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're only about nine dollars a kilo oh, right, but then it's not it's not citrus season here so and in the tropics i think they have to bring them up anyway from south down south um and it's, and it's tend to oh, grow. Of, course. of course that's the thing is it your your country is so huge that you know you can you can grow all sorts pretty much all year round can't you well we can we can um it is mango season here, and I do plan on making if I if I ever get the courage to donate another mango to my kombucha, because they mango. don't you know, they don't normally last. You can get a big pair of mangoes for about ten dollars if you know the right place to look. And oh I, wow! Yeah, I got I got a friend who absolutely loves mangoes. Well, I'd sit under a tree and just quaff the whole lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can never get too many too many mangoes. Right. The chili con carne is pretty much almost done. The beans are bubbling away. So I don't think we're too far too far off. Rice is the there's something else I need to do. Oh. And this the, uh, with the kombucha, this has to be now to cool to tepid, which is room temperature. Do you concur, my chef friend Nick? What what temperature is tepid? Tepid. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tepid is like um, touchable temperature. So is it like room temperature? Yeah, a little bit. I'd say a little bit more than room temperature. Depends okay, how so depends how warm your room is ultimately. But well, I don't know, but I'm roasty because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I feel like I'm just gonna end up in a puddle. But um, so these these can be left till it's, it's tepid. So whether that's room temperature or not, but perhaps needs to cool down for a little bit longer. And then when they when it's cool, I decad them from the saucepans into the jars, which I'll pop back on here. Um, this jar I've got on the carousel now. That's the one with the tap. I've got them there at um, at Niger's place, and these ones are the ones that I've got here. The what they call the gallon glass jars. So 
um, I put them pretty much evenly between two. Two. Oh, no, I don't think I'll get time to do that tonight. But when I do my um, berry kombucha, I'll get some berries. I've got berries in the freezer. You can get them fresh. I think they're nicer if you do it fresh. But, you know, when you live on a boat, <laughs> you just Yeah, there's only so many things you can do. So I have berries in the freezer and I will add that to the big jar when I put the scoby in. So when oh. you take the, when you take the scoby out when after it's first ferment, you leave it if it's humid, you probably leave it 5 days, but you need to taste it because if it starts tasting vinegary, it's gone too long. So really leave it to um, a week in cold weather or longer in cooler weather, but as it warms up it'll ferment more quickly. So if you're in a you know tropics or subtropics like I am, you'd want to leave it. So I did this on oh, what is it? No. Friday. So it was today, Tuesday. So I only took four days to get to a nice, nice, um, nice tasting ferment. So oh, cool, and, cool. I just want to say hello to, to Linda that has been watching uh watching on the on the facebook page on my facebook page thank you so much um Hi, and, and uh Esme as well thank you for watching that's uh because awesome. so uh, it's because we've been in so many different places i with that, those ones we can't actually see the comments come up in the well, studio using yeah so i don't think we can on youtube either or on linkedin so if you're watching from over there hello uh we appreciate you joining us and please do Join us over on Amazon um, if you're watching us from anywhere. Um, that's where we can see your comments on Nick Wood, uh, his page, uh, his Amazon site, or his Facebook page. Are you on Ke uh, Keto Nick Facebook page? Yeah, we're on the Keto Nick Facebook page. We're on the Keto Nick YouTube channel. That's a, a very recent uh, addition mm -hmm. to, to the tribe. Um, yeah, we're everywhere. <laughs> you know, you're everywhere. Oh, can I announce this now? This is exciting. Oh, go for it. And I just come up with this idea, and I love what you're doing with the keto stuff. And he wants to do a show called Love Your Guts. And Ooh, nice. it's um it's it's about well we, that's what the, the working title, but it's about being fit and healthy and over 50. So, nice, uh, like that. and and so we, because he he's done a, a, so much research and he's put a lot of it into practice, and we 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 use ourselves as guinea pigs, like um, uh, Michael Mosley from the Fast Eight Hundred. I love the way he uses mm -hmm. himself as guinea pig, and we said, oh well, we'll we'll use ourselves as guinea pigs, and we'll try different things and different superfoods and different ways but intermittent fasting and keto and you know just just to find what works for us and and then sharing it just like you're doing with keto nick so um, oh that's lovely what a great idea no i, I yeah. love that love that yeah idea. so okay. we're, we're looking at starting that in november so watch this space and we might even get you on as a guest speaker as a guest on our show How's um, that? It would be an <laughs> honour. What could I say? say? It'd be so much fun. <laughs> so funny, well, funny enough, uh, that actually coincides with with something. I because I'm uh, the reason I've, I've gone keto um, is is told you a story about my uh, my business coach who just also happens to be a, a hundred uh, un undertaken a hundred Ironman triathlon competition. So he does know a little bit about uh, nutrition and food. And so he told me to you know, cut out the carbs and go walking. Um, and I was chatting to him uh, in the last couple of weeks, and he was saying about, oh, he loves the Keto Nick show and, and what we do. And, uh, <clears throat> and he was saying, look, you know, is there a way you could teach healthy eating? So not, not necessarily keto, but, um, but how to make healthy food. And that's, that's the thing I was saying to him. I said, what we've been chatting about over the weekend is trying to come up with literally how to you know how easy it is to cook healthily so I, I yeah. would say it's quicker for me to cook something um than it is to get a takeout oh yeah well that's definitely true for me and we don't get <laughs> <Uber> <laughs> <eats here. laughs> definitely true for you 
particularly uh, unless it's fish, of course, um, that might be quite. Oh that yeah, well, that's that's haul in. That's not take out. <laughs> yeah, that's just haul haul aboard. Um, so, so yeah, so, uh, so so yeah, we're looking at making, making a cooking show, basically showing. And I know, I mean, Jamie Oliver did this a few years back. You know, fifteen minute meals. But yeah, some of, and, and that's the thing you can you can do it. So so yeah, so that's that's in the pipeline. So some days we'll Ooh. focus on nutrition because he says you know eat different people eat for different reasons. Mm. And uh, they won't just be keto. It'll be uh, all different things, but but things that you can cook really quickly. So yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's the thing. And just again, a bit like nice, just to get people eating healthily. There's no yeah. there's no need to not eat healthily. And also, what I find is that actually buying the the, the ingredients. Two things. One, if you if you know what you're going to be cooking for the week, you go shopping with a list, and then you won't overspend. That's the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. But then the second thing is is that you know when you're when you've got the raw ingredients, actually, you know, you're you're it's cheaper than buying processed food. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean certainly in, in the UK, I don't know if it's the same for Australia. Oh, I've lost it, my camera. A, no, you got is that <clears throat> is that we can, you know, we can you can go and spend, you know, five pounds on a chicken breast, but actually you could spend four pounds on a chicken. Um, you know. That you then have to joint yourself, but you're way more things to to, to use, and uh, you know it's it, it's a real money saver, and it's quick. You know, I made I made a um, one of the things I made years ago was uh, it was a Gordon Ramsay recipe, and actually I got I got Gordon's I got Gordon's cookbook in my carousel thing. Uh, yeah, there you go. Ooh, shout out to Gordon Ramsay now, um, and one of the recipes. Uh, that uh, that I used of his was um, Claridge's chicken pie, and this was a very very beautiful um, high end chicken pie. It was wasn't like a pie in the in the traditional sense. You know, the pie lid was puff pastry and cooked separately and all that sort of thing. But in the recipe, um, you know, he had uh, you had diced chicken, and the chicken dices you poach for five minutes. I'm thinking. There's no way you can cook chicken in five minutes, but you can, and it, it didn't take long at all. And it's, that's the thing. Again, it goes back to what we were saying earlier about that we are, um, what we were saying earlier about, about bringing things up to room temperature. So if you've got your chicken at room temperature, you've diced it, you put it in some poaching liquid and you've got like little one centimetre squares of chicken, yeah, it'll take five minutes to cook. And that, that's it. And that is how fast... You know we can get uh, we can get cooking done. I mean I know on this show we do time we kind of take our time because obviously we want to showcase like the pots and pans that we have in our carousels, the you know, kitchen aid, the cookbooks, and all those things. Um, and so yeah, so we do take our time a little bit more on on here. But you know the the, the chili con carne, you know that could have been done. I could have whacked up on a super high heat. We could have had that. Uh, Pretty much done in 20 minutes, but I had on a low simmer. Uh, the rice takes 10 minutes to cook, that's all. Um, as you saw, the guacamole took us, what, five minutes? That was just chopping up an avocado, some uh, coriander, onion, uh, a lime, zest, lime juice, what's not love, a bit of salt. That was all that was in there. And I tell you what, the smell of that, as well as the taste, is unbelievable. Um, so we've got the rice on the go. Uh, that won't take too much longer. We've got the beans that are pretty much pretty much done. Um, it's going to give them a little bit more heat. Uh, and these were beans that I, I did from scratch. So I had this morning, I had dried kidney beans. Uh, so I just did a little bit of a little bit of a pre-soak. We were saying earlier, if you were watching, you know, people often say, oh, do you have to soak them for 24 hours or overnight? I mean, you can if you want, but actually I just, I literally, Popped them in the saucepan two hours before we came on air, uh, brought them up to the boil, um, and then just reduced them and let them just sat. I've actually turned the heat off. I let them sit in their own juice for about two hours, and then I've cooked them up now, and they are beautiful. And I'll tell you, they are they are so much nicer than any tinned red bean you're going to buy. They've got the texture, the flavour. When you open, and this, this was lovely. When you open the jar of these bins and smell it. 
Mm. You've got the most amazing. It's not like it. It's like beans, but like a perfumed bean smell. Ooh. It, I mean, it's 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 different. It is it is different to to, to what you'd expect. So, and you can do that with any beans. So, you know, it goes for for, for beans, um, any beans, lentils, legumes. You know, you, uh, you know. I, I, I've seen a lot of people saying, "Oh, you need to boil them, take the froth off." Da, 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 da. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you got froth on there, then that's just things that you probably don't want. But um, but it's fine. I don't think there's anything. I don't really think there's anything that's going to cause you any damage uh, if you, as long as you cook it. You boil them anyway. So once you boil things. That's pretty good. Talking about leaving leaving things to rest. So that's our chili there that's been no, just. Hang on, I'll just, just give you a bit now, more space there on screen. Yeah, so that's the chili that's just now sitting there resting. Um, we've got the rice that's five minutes off uh, and the beans. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just add the beans to the chili and then on the rice and then the guacamole and we're done. And that's the thing, like I was saying earlier, it doesn't have to be, you know piping piping hot because you don't want to burn your mouth but you want mm -hmm. it to be obviously warm enough uh, to, to be nice but yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be screamingly hot take the roof off your mouth the chili will do that depending, <laughs> depending on how much chili you put in when was that <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah so i'm actually going to have a little taste just to see um mm. That's got a punch. Well, nice. I haven't had dinner yet, and I'm thinking, what can I have? I've got kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh dear. Got kombucha. Cool. Right. I'm just gonna let me drain drain my beans. So, I'm gonna pull yourself back up on camera properly, Adair, because I'm gonna go out to my sink. Okay, do. <laughs> so that was um, very interesting, and. Um, I, I reckon I will do the chili sin carne. Might not be on screen, but definitely give it a try because Nigel's been he's hankering to do it. So unless we do another another chili uh, chili con uh, chili sin carne um, cook off yeah. with without meat. So yeah, yeah, we we can do that. We can do that. Nice veggie veggie version. Um, yes. I think, uh, I think uh, Jay. On Amazon are saying is that book good for vegans? So let's do a little vegan chili. Obviously, I've gone way over the top on my beans. <laughs> you can never have too many beans. Never have too many beans. Absolutely. Where's my little stick? So I'm just gonna. Mix do you remember? Those. Have you ever seen Blazing Saddles? Oh yes. Oh gosh. Yeah. The old, the old spaghetti Western where they're all. Munging out in the baked beans, and then you know all the rest. <laughs> so funny, yeah, yeah. That was, gosh, I remember seeing that at the cinema as a young, young man, young boy. I, I, mean, I, still, I, I reckon I it was one school. of my dad's favourite movies, <laughs> as, as far as spaghetti westerns go. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. I can't think of the other title now. We probably look back on it now and go, oh, do we really laugh at that? Because it's pretty inane, but, you know, it was funny at the time. Oh, absolutely. yeah, it, it was. It was. It did the job. What was, the, the yeah. what was Gene Wilder's character, the Rumpo Kid? <laughs> you remember that? Oh, my I God. Remember, yeah, I know. Scary. Right. Scary. I remember that. Actually, we've, um, yesterday. Yeah, this, uh, is, this is scary. <laughs> whoa, that's scary. Mm -hmm. So that is so cool. I've got another one, but shall I go and get it while I'm here while you're oh, doing the beer? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm I've got to the price isn't gonna be a million miles away. Oh dear. Just got... I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a bit like coming through a maze. <laughs> stepping, stepping over. I can now, see you. I can see your. Oh, this looks good. Cool. 
is a mummy awesome. and it's got like it's a big it's a big long one with feet and it was like we had it <laughs> we had it hanging up under the canopy of the boat yeah not yesterday or last night the night before and it's got wow. a motion sensor and every time it it just went, went off continuously and then it got windy and it's feet because they're a bit heavier and the rest of its body is it just kept like this looking oh. and i'm like it's trying to get out <laughs> yeah that's it that's when the, that's when your brain starts playing tricks on you and it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant i love it i love it i mean, i guess you're not going to get that many trick-or-treaters coming to your boat well that's the thing is um we said there's going to be your uh, lots of tricks that'll be going ha ha no <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit cruel now we've got we've got a hang on i'll just put him down over there we've got a cauldron of of sweets oh nice and but what we're going to do is because we uh if if we can um what they're organizing is a um a parade from the jetty to the barge ramp and so i think what what happens on the island for halloween is they do a little mud map and people submit their addresses for for where the kids can go and they give out these mud maps so you don't you're not just wandering around aimlessly you know where you can go where houses in the island are participating in halloween trick-or-treating yeah. and so i i messaged the coordinator and i said oh i wouldn't mind participating this year and she said what's your address and i said corner jetty and barge <laughs> and she said all right that's um a bit interesting and i said yeah i, I don't know how we're going to go trick-or-treating and so what she said was they'd organize this parade that comes down to the barge ramp and we could come across in a boat so i thought well we could do it a couple of ways we could do it like seven o'clock eight o'clock and nine o'clock and be yeah. over at the beach on the hour but then having a parade and starting the trick-or-treating from the barge ramp makes sense so i think that's, that's what yeah. that's yeah, but what, that does make sense. But what we thought we'd do um is we would um it's too windy here which it, it looks like it's going to be windy over the weekend then we'll take all our stuff over and there's a little a place where they've got a barbecue and a tables and things like that so i thought we might set up our um our trick-or-treat base over there rather than have oh, it here so but either way we're going to be involved we do have some fancy lights here. I'm wondering if I could turn everything out and show you because it's pretty. Oh, yeah, that would be great. It's quite pretty. Um, yeah, let's see if I can do that while you do it. While you do your beans, I'll, I'll just shut everything down here and see if we can get some light. Light them. There's no light on the subject. <laughs> yeah, get some, get some light on the subject. That's it. Get no, get some no light on the subject. <laughs> oh, they're in darkness. Now, um, I'm going to take the light oh, over here. Oops. The other, the other camera. I've just swapped cameras, so I don't want. Just going to make sure. Now I don't know whether you can see that or not. Who said that? <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it's looking a little bit dark. No, not there. No, uh, it's not working. Oh. Oh. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. Never mind. Well, you just have to come over and have a look. It was a, it was a, it was a valiant effort. I'll be it honest. was a valiant effort. Keeping myself in these I didn't realise. I've got them in the carousel. These are my uh, circulum uh, saucepans. I've used three of them today. Um, because oh, I used cool. one for the beans, one for our lovely chilli, which now has now has the red kidney beans in it as well. Um, okay. I've got my, I've got my rice 
sitting there now. So that rice is drained. So rice, uh, pretty easy to, to, to cook. Um, pretty much, I, I kind of go with uh, taste uh, and texture. Mm -hmm. But as a rule of thumb, I put water in the pan, uh, bring it to the boil, add the rice, turn it down for about 10 minutes, then just taste a little bit, make sure it's okay. Then if it's fine, drain it. I put some salt and some, because we've got chili, I put some lime juice into the rice. Um, and I just have a little tea towel, tea towel over the top, just to absorb um, the moisture. That way the rice doesn't go all sticky. So you've got nice light rice. And um, that's it, we're pretty much done. So we've got the guacamole in the guacamole in the in the bowling. Guacamole in the bowling. Guacamole. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, rice is done, chili's done. Uh, I've got a I've got a little plate today because it is still quite early in the UK. It's only 20 past 10. Might be a little bit too early for um for a chili uh chili kind of chili brunch. It was lovely. We had Corinda. Um, Corinda was chatting when when uh, uh, when uh, Steve and I were on yesterday, and uh, I said, "Oh yeah, we're doing chili con carne." And he said, "For breakfast." I'm like, "Yeah." Well, that's that's the beauty about making these. I'm just trying to get the camera just a little bit. The, that's the beauty about what you do with the chili con carne because that that actually the longer it sits and the long the flavors blending together and they're like some of those foods are even better the next day i reckon oh absolutely yeah the flavors develop um for sure and that's the nice thing is we've got lots of chili here because my mother-in-law bless her um she loves she loves my chili so Ooh. although last night she said it was a little bit hot but that's coming from a woman that gave me the most nuclear chili once she said she said oh i made some chili nick would you like to try some I said, oh, yes, please. And I was like, my goodness, it nearly made me make my eyes water. And I said, gosh, how much, how much chili have you put in there? So she, she put in <laughs> she put in a whole jar of, uh, I think it was a Lloyd Grossman chili sauce, and then mm. extra chilies just to pep it up a little bit. And I was like, my goodness, that was, uh, that was a my, my scalp sweating just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. All right, I reckon Mike and Butch is about ready to... Pour in, so you you plate up and I'll pour. Fantastic, right? I'll I'll plate up then. That's a little mini portion. Yeah, so as I was saying, so this is lovely, light, fluffy rice. Just a little. Yep. Oh, we've got Dana here. Hello, Dana. She goes, do we get to test this? <laughs> we, get to test, we get to test the chili con carne or the kombucha. I'm just putting in a um, couple of handfuls of berries. You can make it either way. This is um, one of them I'm putting berries in because I know that. Nige likes it that way. Oh, look at you. What you've got. My God, that is Yeah, good. that's my little chili con carne. I should have had dinner before we started. <laughs> <laughs> so now go. I'm going to put in a... Oh, that's probably the best way of doing this without making it look awkward. I'm getting my hair everywhere. Little, little quinelle of... Um, over there as well. And the best thing is, there you go, that's better. Oh, oh that that's looks good. good. That looks really good. Right, so. Really, really good. So what I like to do, because I've made two saucepans because i don't have a six or an eight liter saucepan i've got a four liter saucepan and a two liter saucepan i like to put equal amounts of kombucha and it's probably doesn't make any difference really but it's just me being you know a little bit weird like that <laughs> so i do try and do equal amounts in each each jar yeah and that's good. So, so is one you say one was berry 
This one's a berry. It's got the berries in it. And this one's a just a normal, um, it's an unflavoured one. And what, what I do with this one is I put the, uh, I make one with the berries, which looks like when it's made, I put fresh berries in so it will look like that. Oh, um, nice, yeah. So that's that's got uh, three days for the second ferment. Fresh berries in, so it looks like. And then that one is the I, I add in the ginger, and you can see the ginger there. Nice, nice, I, add, I like it. I add the ginger in, but you can do any flavors that you like. Like I said, I've done chili, <laughs> apple, apple and cinnamon. I know. Cin I I did. Uh, someone did give me chili vodka once. That was evil. Have you? Uh, hi, to, hi to Irene. Irene, thank you for watching. She just said uh, we look brilliant. She's going to screenshot us and uh, and send it to Daniel. <laughs> oh, really? Hi, Irene. Thank you for joining us. Oh, fantastic! Fantastic. I'm just doing now. This is the two liters, so I'll just do. Those. Now this will sit on the bench, like I said before. I just actually I just poured it all over the bench. Um, <laughs> so so this will this will be um, probably four four or five days fermenting in um, in warm weather. In the cooler weather, you probably you need to leave it for longer. So now what I do, this is the scoby that I took out of the uh, berry jar last time. So I'm just going to plonk that back in. And when you take the scoby out, take out about 400 ml of the, um, the liquid as well. And that acts as your starter for the next one. So that's the scoby. Scobies look a bit interesting. They're poor little underrated things. They're just ugly. But they yeah. do a really good job. So yeah, I'm, still trying to work, I'm still trying to work out exactly what scobies are. Well, I've got one in the carousel. They look like implants, breast implants. Hang on, I'll see if I can. <laughs> can you see that? Yeah. That's so is it? Yeah. So is it an animal? Sorry, am I being really thick? I don't know. It's I. I bought like I. I bought the scoby from Alex from Kinky Kombucha, and she taught me how to make it. And she um, she posted it to me, so I I have no idea how a scoby starts. Oh, interesting. So uh, they grow more scobies, but it's like chicken and an egg. You've got to have a scoby to grow a scoby. So gotcha. these. Are, these will multiply. So what will happen with this one, the um, the the scoby will grow around the fruit, and it will, the fruit. When I take it out, the fruit is going to be like shells because it will have eaten all the the fruit. And so I end up. I throw that out, and it's and it's really quite nice. Um, and then you can just use gauze or I, your chucks. Just use the the chucks. And pop yep. on the lid, pop pop it over like yeah. that. Looks good. Sit it in a a just on your bench out out of the sunshine, out of the sunlight, and Bob's your uncle. I do have some scobies there on. Um, if you want, if you're looking to make some kombucha yourself, um, what's yeah. done? Oh, today? I'm Drink, I have a fatty liver. Dana, this is good for you. It's not, it's non alcoholic. I don't drink, I haven't had alcohol for many, many, many years. Um, sometimes, if it has any alcohol, it's like a teeny wincy percentage, but it's 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 probiotic, it's good for your gut, it's really good for you. So, yeah, yeah, good. So, I guess it's, fer it's fer the fermentation process with the scoby. I guess it's breaking down yes. sugars in the in the fruit. Yes. So there might be, you know, it it would be tiny, tiny amount of alcohol, that's all. It's it's negligible. Yeah. It really is. Like I said, I uh, you know, I don't I I'm not a drinker and I don't you just don't, you know, my grandkids enjoy it. It's uh it's a good it's a good healthy drink. 
that's got good probiotics it's for good gut health so it's not something dana that you would have to um have to worry about too much but uh if we ever meet up dana i uh i'll, I'll, I'll get you a kombucha i think dana's <laughs> in Zealand from memory so nice well i'm gonna, I'm gonna Thanks, send Debbie out to get the ingredients and the kit Yes, well, have a look at my Amazon site. It's on the carousel. <laughs> mm. And the scoby is there as well. The scoby and the... Um, the that would be, be a much more sensible idea. I'm just going yes, to go on to your Amazon site and order it. That would be so much yeah. easier. Yeah, uh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I'll get myself a garlic press from yours and mm. <laughs> some other stuff as well. Uh, all right, well, let's yeah, see. You know, we've eaten half your chili con carne. Just, just give us a, give us a, oh, a an well, off eyeful. Show us your. It is, it is absolutely gorgeous. So we've got a bit of rice, lovely bit of chili, got that beautiful guacamole we made as well. Get oh. a mouthful of all three, and it is absolute chili heaven. Oh, mm. nice, really nice. It is really nice well i am hungry i'm going to go and make myself some food <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. probably yeah. it's probably just going to be a salad i think i've got a bit of salad left in the fridge so um oh. that. that's okay i oh, know sad face <laughs> that is that is and for people that have joined if you weren't with us right at the beginning the whole reason was we were going to do a chili cook-off but a dare there was a storm coming in it was looking a bit choppy so we didn't want to run the risk of leaving the boat and then not being able to get back on the boat so so we do what we always do with live streamers we make the best of it and so Adair could make the kombucha kombucha sorry um i can make the chili anyway because i have the ingredients i had to nip out and get the tin tomatoes um but yeah so we we went for it and so and i reckon i reckon it worked just as well absolutely absolutely we're still, we're still, we still made tasty things and uh and so, guys, let us know what you want us to cook off next week. I mean, otherwise we'll, we'll think Ooh. of something. But, oh, oh. We, were, we, were, we were having dinner with some friends and they said, why don't you do, we're telling them about the show, and they were said, why don't you do tacos without meat? Oh, that's an idea. And I no, thought, <laughs> so, no. so are you, you reckon you'd be up for tacos without meat? Go for it. Tacos without meat. Vegetarian tacos. I don't know yes. if vegan. I won't be vegan because I'll always have cheese on everything. So vegetarian tacos, I reckon. We, we're we're going to give them a red hot poke. What do you think? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's do that. I mean, there's, there's yeah, you put your cheese on. I, I, I'll knock up some vegan ones as well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah don't worry. We'll, we'll cater for everybody. All right, and I'll just make sure that I've got the ingredients on the boat before the <laughs> the afternoon of, of the event. Like I was, yeah, I just get, yeah. I just gonna get my shit together. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like, I like it. We've got this Mexican theme going. There might be some more guacamole in the taco. <laughs> well, I, well, I might, I might just have to um, buy myself a Mexican hat. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and some uh, some of those uh, shakers. Brilliant. Oh, oh thank so you. Much. Thank you, Adair, for a brilliant, brilliant cook-off again. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Nick. It's been so much fun. Absolute pleasure as usual. And we'll see you next week. Are we going to go early again or are you? Yes, please. Yeah. Can we can we go early again? Because that's good. I'm happy we, get to see, that. We, we get to see more of your background. And as the weeks go on, we're going to get to see more and more of it because it's a beautiful view. We shouldn't beautiful. waste it. That's all. That was fantastic. <laughs> all right. Well, if that works for you, I'm up for it as well. Thanks, Nick. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week, guys. Bye.